Hi everyone, Dr. Sunil Dand, internal medicine physician. Welcome to another video. There can be fewer worse illnesses than dementia. I see this every single day in the hospital. What a horrible toll on the patient and also families, which are affected just as much as patients. Families everywhere are often devastated by their relatives who get dementia and all of the associated problems. Now, in terms of preventing dementia, there are never any guarantees, and I've talked about many of the lifestyle factors which can help to prevent dementia. And I want to focus in this video on brain exercises, brain activities that can help to prevent dementia. The brain is a very plastic organ. The neurons in the brain can regenerate and you can train them just like any organ or muscle in the body. And in fact, it has been shown that if you regularly do certain cognitive activities, you can significantly reduce the chances of getting dementia. It may not always definitely prevent dementia, but hey, if you can have an extra few years, those years are precious. Years of traveling, years of spending time with your family, your grandchildren cognitively intact. And in fact, studies have shown that a cognitively active lifestyle in old age may delay the onset of dementia by as much as five years. That is a massive difference. So in terms of cognitive activities, brain exercises, I recommend at least one hour a day. Hopefully for anyone over the age of 65, which is the target age group, this is something which is easily attainable because the majority of people have retired. They should have the time to do it. And hopefully you will find these activities enjoyable as well. So here we go then. Three brain activities, brain exercises that can help to prevent dementia. Number one, short-term memory recall. One of the hallmarks of early dementia People become very forgetful with regards to their short-term memory. They get short-term memory loss. And there are lots of online games available which test short-term memory, but a simple activity that anyone can partake in, write down five random words, five items on a piece of paper. Repeat them two to three times, and after 10 to 15 minutes, see how many of them you remember. Hopefully it's all five. And it can be very satisfying as well if you're good at this activity. But I recommend that activity regularly to test your short-term memory and work on those neurons, keeping them strong. Number two, learning a new skill. Now there is a common misconception out there that after a certain age, you can't learn anything new. What absolute nonsense. You can learn something new at absolutely any age. And it could be anything, hopefully something you enjoy. You can learn the basics of a new language. You can learn a musical instrument. You can learn a new card game. You can learn to play board games. You can play chess. Chess is fantastic for keeping cognitively sharp. But whatever it is, work on learning something new, hopefully every few months. Keep those neurons working hard and regenerating and you can involve other people, make it fun play with family, play with your grandchildren, but keep learning new skills to keep yourself as sharp as possible. Number three, reading and writing. Isn't it interesting how things come full circle? That's the first advice we often give to toddlers. We want to get them reading and writing, but many older people fall off a cliff with regards to reading and writing. And I'd certainly recommend more than just watching TV. I recommend actually reading. You can read the news online, keep your general knowledge up to date, what's happening in the world, and keep on writing, even if it's just typing out emails. But you must read and write. Don't lose those skills. Keep on using your neurons to read and write as much as possible. So those are three activities then that I would encourage anyone over the age of 65 who is watching, or if you know anyone over the age of 65, which is basically all of us, encourage them to do that. One hour a day on those activities. Short-term memory recall, learning a new skill, and reading and writing. And there's probably some overlap there as well. But we owe it to ourselves to keep our brain as sharp as possible. It is a gift and there's no reason why people need to fall off a cliff after the age of 65. I'm also a certified personal trainer. And I can tell you that what applies to keeping your body strong and your muscles strong 
also applies to your brain. As I said at the beginning, your brain is a plastic organ and those neurons can regenerate and you can keep them strong. And you will always get those skeptics out there who says, oh, it won't make any difference. If you're going to get something, you'll get it. Similar to that overweight person who has type 2 diabetes who says, oh, if I had eaten a better diet and I'd exercised, it wouldn't have made any difference. Of course, it would have made a difference. You would have either not got type 2 diabetes or you would have got it much later. It's all about trying your best to lower your chances of getting an illness in life, whatever that illness is. As for dementia, it is a terrible, terrible illness. I wouldn't wish it on anyone and I wouldn't wish it on any family. But most people out there have a story within their family and they've seen the impact that dementia has. So if you can do something to lower your chances of getting dementia, why not go for it? Every year you have of life is precious and do not underestimate the impact of doing your best to keep every part of your body as healthy and active as possible. Thanks everyone for listening. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out my online academy. That link is also down below. Hit the like button if you like this video and the bell button for more similar videos in the future. Have a fantastic weekend everyone and we will speak again very soon.